I was thinking about it the other day, and I'm like, hey, I can't remember the last time I did a Q&A video about wrestling. So, felt like a good time to go and do one. So, let's do that. Thanks to all of you that took to Twitter to ask your questions. If you want to participate in future Q&A videos, even though I won't be able to ask all, answer all the questions asked this time, uh, follow me on Twitter and submit your questions when I ask for them in the future. Let's get started. Yeah. Splash Bro Kieran's going to kick us off. Uh, since you clearly don't want Cody to face Roman, that's right, nor should I, nor should you, nor should anybody. Finish the story, finish the story. What the fuck does that even mean? It's stupid. Um, anyways, Seth is likely facing Punk and Cena versus Orton. This time it counts. And that's right. Once in a lifetime, this time it counts for the whole shebang bang. Uh, what would you do with Cody at WrestleMania? Send him at Gunther for the IC title. That's where he belongs in the fucking mid card. Fuck him. MC17 Clark. I agree with you that Cody going against Roman at Mania is stupid. Correct. However, do you think that Roman will and should break Hulk Hogan's first title reign length of 1,474 days as champion? Hell, should he even break Bruno's first reign of over 2,800 days? Hell no to the Bruno piece. Hogan? Ooh. <laughs> Again, you've gotten so close to it. Why not? Would it really kill the WWE if they kept his title reign going? And again, like, the whole notion of Cody being the guy to beat him to me is so stupid because having somebody beat Roman, it should be a guy that's going to be the guy for the next decade. And Cody's like the same age as Roman. So it's not even just like, I don't like Cody Rhodes. It's just like, it doesn't make a whole lot of business sense. Cody's in a spot in his career where if you're going to put him at the top, so be it. But you can't beat him a ton. You know, part of the purpose of, you know, having Roman lose is so that way somebody else at some point could go on and put others over and like carry that. And I know. Um, anyways, uh, I'd entertain him passing Hogan's length. Hell no to the Bruno length. Uh, Tamiba 2. Can you explain why Hulk Hogan is great as I think he gets too much hate these days and not just because of Terry Balea's backwards comments. Uh, not just backwards, but racist. Let's get it right. Uh, and also, he's like, he's a, he's a pathological liar too, right? You know, and it kind of annoys me as Hulk Hogan now at 70 years of age. Like, this should be the phase of my life in his life, you know, when looking back at it. I should be able to come on here and champion Hulk Hogan and how big of a massive megastar he fucking was. And how he's the biggest star in the history of professional wrestling, which still holds true to this day. And talk about his impact, his significance, his legacy in professional wrestling. And in a lot of ways, that's been ruined, and I fucking am mad about that. Um, but I think what happens is, is too often, people want to just hate on him for the racist shit he said, even though they let, you know, like woman beater Stone Cold Steve Austin off the hook free and clear. They let, you know, also documented racist Ric Flair off the fucking hook. Um, they allow that to dilute them from, like, else, combined with their, like, personal distaste for Hogan's style and Hogan's work um, to where they try to diminish his legacy. And it's just dumb, right? Like, Hogan's the guy that on a main event on a Friday night in 88 with Andre... They drew 33 million viewers. 33 million. You know, no matter how much Dave Meltz or Uncle Dave tries to hoo, 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 tries to sit there and say that WrestleMania 3 didn't have 90 plus thousand people, apparently doesn't grasp the basic math of a stadium like the Silver Dome that could seat over 80,000. Even if you take away a few thousand seats, think about all the thousands of seats you add on the floor. It's fucking dumb. Um, you talk about all the attendance records and all the money drawing records he set over the years and how Hulk Hogan was the biggest star in the industry in the 80s. And then as he went to the 90s, you know, the one time that WWF was ever really truly threatened, it was because Hulk Hogan was at the top of WCW, not fucking Ric Flair. So, you know, people can not like Hogan. They're entitled to that opinion all they want. And I totally understand it, right? It's just don't be so mad at him that you are disconnected from reality. 
and you try to deny the history. Because that doesn't work for me, brother. <laughs> Son Goshuaku. If the women's world title matches end up as Io versus Bailey and Rhea versus Becky, ugh. Which of these WrestleMania 40 options do you think is most likely for Bianca? And he lists a couple different options. I think it's either Trish Stratus or it's Jade Cargill. It's got to be one of those two. And at this point, I might go with Trish. Eyes Leslie. Ooh, it's a lady. Hello, Leslie. Hi. Everybody say hi to Leslie. It's a lady. We don't get a lot of those in these parts. Uh, do you think Sid's famous second rope jump should have a spot in the Hall of Fame? <laughs> I can't even read the rest of the question. You knew where you were going to take me with this. <laughs> he got on the second rope because that dumb son of a bitch, Johnny Ace, told him he needed to expand his offensive repertoire. <laughs> As he's laying on the mat <laughs> with his foot of doom all, over, <laughs> in all different directions, Steiner bumps into him like multiple times during the fucking match. <laughs> oh, God. Not only should Sid's <laughs> what be inducted into the Hall of Fame for the WWE at WrestleMania 40, fucking Sid! should be inducted into the damn Hall of Fame because Sid rules the world. <laughs> Thank you, Leslie, for the laugh. I needed that. Psycho Sid is one of those people that can make me laugh just like this, but fucking don't you start knocking them, anybody, because I'm going to come at you with a vengeance and a fury. Fuck that, because Sid rules the world. Damn it. <laughs> He's going to expand his that off. He got up on that second rope and he meant business. Ah! <laughs> Morse two X. If you could book Bobby Lashley better, how would you book him? Uh, put him on pay per view and have him beat people. How about that? I'm sorry. I'm not trying. I'm still thinking about Psycho Sid. Like, how am I supposed to proceed at this point? Um, well, how would I book Bobby Lashley better? That's how you do it. Is you put him on pay-per-views and you have him win matches. <laughs> put him in significant spots. And now whatever shit they're doing with him right now. Slap happy jerk ass. Which one would you rather watch? The Marina 12 Rounds 2 as a precursor to the WrestleMania main event. A Cena versus Org. Now hold up. You know, this is once in a lifetime. This times it counts. In no way, shape, or fucking form did I sign up to watch any goddamn WWE Studios movie. That's a big fuck you. Hell no. Not watching either one of them. <laughs> Fuck that. Regret we met, ass. Thoughts on the current devil storyline in AEW and who do you want the devil to be revealed to be? I don't give a fuck. I haven't been watching AEW because of dumb shit like that. I don't care. And nor should anybody. It'll be dumb. You know it will be. H review. I almost hope at this point it's just... MJF saying, it was me all along. <laughs> Age Review 73. Besides 1997, what other years of wrestling were your favorite years? And which year was the last good year of wrestling for you? Um, The last truly good year of wrestling for me, even though the wrestling itself wasn't so great, was 2011 to 2013 until I moved out here to Virginia, right? Because... You know, being able to watch it with the old Off the Rope show crew. Man, we had so many good times watching even shitty shows together. That would be the best. Like, if I looked at wrestling and said there's a favorite stretch of wrestling in my entire life, you can talk about, like, 97, you can talk about 98, you could talk about, like, 87, like, eh. I come to I come back to 2011 to 2013. That's the tops. Nothing will ever top that for me. Andreas underscore Byron. What's your opinion on Liv Morgan being arrested? It's 2023 and we're still busting people for weed. That's fucking dumb. That's stupid. That, that's it. That's my opinion on it. That's stupid. Uh, Frank Suarez 91. Doesn't wrestling seem boring now? Ding, 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 ding. Correct. That's why I watch so little of it. It really is, though. It's bad. It's just boring. The Team Forward. 
Who is the best choice to beat Rhea? You know, I would have said Bianca. I would have said somebody like Jade Cargill, but it seems like they're going down like a Becky Lynch direction. And I could potentially buy that. So any of those three options would be the best to me at this point. Cisco1988 asks, if you were starting a wrestling company and had to choose between John Cena and Cody Rhodes to start, both in their prime, who would you pick? Uh, it's Cena. <laughs> like, come on, man. Like, yeah, it's Cena. Because I think he's even better when you're talking about the media and the promotional shit. Some might say, well, Cody's better in the ring. Well, that shit doesn't fucking matter. Like, Cena has more star presence to him. Cena's also much better on the microphone. Especially if I got to actually have Cena be a heel. It's Cena all fucking day. Like, it's not even, they're not even the same stratosphere. Which is what I, I got. I'm picking Cena. Uh, Winter Orioles. Uh, and then the other big reason is I feel like I could trust Cena a lot more than I could the lying son of a bitch Cody Rhodes. How about that? Uh, Winter Orioles asks, if you were negotiating for Raw's next network, how would you convince WWE to go back to two hours? Um, I think your framing here is interesting. Because if you're the WWE, why would you? And if you're a network, why wouldn't you want to pay for that third hour of the ratings and the key demo numbers that the WWE could provide? Right? I don't know that I'd want to be convincing the WWE to go back to two hours. There's also a a dangerous, you know, thing here to think about is you peel back from three hours to two hours. You know, there's some spots on the roster that are there specifically to help fill some of that extra television time. You get rid of some of the television time, you have less need for some of that talent. So as much as the peeling back to three to two hours would feel great and fantastic, I think everybody would really appreciate it involved, you know, there would be some negative consequences for that. It would mean less money overall for the company and mean a few less spots for talent. I don't know that that's a great thing. It sucks, but that's the reality. Uh, Robot underscore 4DC closes this out by asking, if you were to run a promotion, who would you start with? Seth Rollins or Kenny Omega as your main attraction? If those were my only two choices for a main attraction, I would choose not to get in the wrestling business because I would feel like I'd be inevitably doomed to failure. However, if you're saying you have to get into wrestling and you have to choose one of these guys, it's Seth Rollins. He's a couple years younger. He's got more versatility, in my humble opinion, as a performer. I feel like I could trust Seth Rollins to kind of go with the flow a little bit more. I worry a little bit about Kenny Omega. Like, it depends. Are you talking about, like, Kenny Omega deals with the Bucks? Or Kenny Omega could just be Kenny Omega and I don't have to deal with the Bucks and the elite bullshit. I just talk to Kenny Omega. Um, But I think Seth Rollins can see the bigger picture better and get past his own bullshit. He's also somebody that can put aside personal feelings to do what's best for business. So, yeah, I think it's got to be Seth Rollins, doesn't it? Who would you guys pick? Would you pick Seth Rollins or Kenny Omega and why? I don't know. You tell me. Uh, But my choice would be Seth Rollins, obviously. Uh, So thank you to everyone who submitted your questions for this Q&A. I'll have to do more of these in 2024, and I'm certainly planning on doing so. So until my next video, I'll see you later. Merry Christmas. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy Hanukkah. Whatever the hell you celebrate. I'm out.